When I ran for president four years ago, I said we're in a battle for the soul of America, and we still are. The question we're facing is whether in the years ahead, we have more freedom or less freedom, more rights or fewer. I know what I want the answer to be, and I think you do too. This is not a time to be complacent. That's why I'm running for re-election. Because I know America. We stand with you. Putin may circle Kyiv with tanks, but he'll never gain the hearts and souls of the Iranian people. He'll never, he'll never extinguish their love of freedom. And there's a I think the question of Joe Biden's age is going to be fairly significant once he announces and as we move through the campaign. It's important to remember that 2020 was by far not even close to being a normal election with the pandemic, everybody, you know, nearly everyone under lockdown. So he wasn't campaigning like a normal candidate would have been. And so now at the age of 80, uh, I think that's going to be a significant factor, whether or not he's going to be able to keep up with that pace that voters expect to see candidates, you know, put themselves through when they're running for president. So They're going to have to rely probably on Kamala Harris quite a bit. They're going to have to rely on, you know, other surrogates that really the next generation of leaders in the in the Democratic Party. And, and I suspect that they're going to want Barack Obama out on the campaign trail as much as possible. So they've got some people that they can call in, uh, which we saw in 2022, we saw in 2020. But then that doesn't exactly leave uh, a lot of confidence in the actual nominee if if Joe Biden can't generate that kind of excitement without calling in the other younger, more you know charismatic people within the party.
email exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate, but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defense minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. The UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colony. US and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the colonial loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting.